I'm Gold Derby News and Features Editor Ray Richmond, and I'm welcoming three-time Oscar nominee Arthur Max from the Sony Pictures Apple Original Films historical drama Napoleon to our film production designers Meet the Experts panel. Arthur, this is your 15th collaboration with director Ridley Scott, and you have a 16th coming next year with Gladiator 2. You must be able to read each other's minds at this point. Pretty much. Wow. How collaborative is Ridley with the members of his team? Oh, very. I mean, it's a it's a team sport with him. So does he he, he asks your opinion constantly about things and, and he trusts your judgment? Uh apparently. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, I, I think it's usually a, a team conference every morning. Uh and he's always very well prepared for the day. Uh, both with uh, script notes and uh, storyboard cartoon-like drawings, his famous Ridleygrams, which introduces whatever we were expecting. Uh, very often it's, it's, it's uh, a little nuanced on the day. Ridleygrams. You gotta Ridley love that. Yes. <laughs> Did oh, you? Uh, He's been doing them uh, from the beginning. And, um, he he he's an art school graduate, and um, I have to say, I mean, there are very few directors that I know of who can um, draw at the level that he does. Um, Jean Cocteau could draw a bit. Um, Alfred Hitchcock, I think, when he was an art director, drew his storyboards. Um, I'm not sure, I don't want to uh, forget anybody, um, but I think he's the best I know. And it's very easy then, because you see exactly the framing and the elements, the key elements of the scene. So uh, within a very complicated situation, it, it does clarify what you're trying to achieve for everyone, not just for the production design. Because it's a very uh, collaborative uh, team building process with working with him. Um, we work sometimes with people who've been with us for long periods of time. Nobody longer than me, though. Uh, and, um, and with new people, fresh uh, to the situation. And, and it makes it very interesting um, because that it's an open forum with with Ridley as well. It's not like you must do this exactly. Um, you know, he welcomes contributions from from that, the people around him. That's gotta be why he's so successful, I'm sure. I mean, in part. Um, uh, Arthur, talk about working in the world of the 18th and 19th centuries and the kinds of opportunities and challenges that period presents architecturally for you. Well, the, that was kind of the major challenge um, one of them, uh, in that we, for various reasons, decided not to go to France to a movie about Napoleon. Uh, we love France. Uh, we'd been there just recently on The Last Duel and had a great experience. But uh, the challenge was to find France uh, in England and for other types of scenes, uh, the not mostly nautical scenes, um, but not exclusively, to go to Malta, which we knew um, from Gladiator originally. And um, I was surprised because I, I was disappointed not to be going to France, um, you know, to the authentic locations. Uh, and But the, the 18th century was alive and well in England, um, in stately homes in the, in the London area, and some further afield. Um, and it, it, it was surprisingly rich in um, 18th century Baroque and earlier, which um, uh, made it you know, quite practical to do this film there. And we, and we have many, many choices. So there was a, you know, a delightful period of scouting all the stately homes you could think of, of that period and style. And we, we took the best of, of um, 
a, a great bunch. One you got Pat. I'm sorry, go ahead. Well, I was going to say there was one location in particular called Bowton Hall, which is way up in Northumberland, about three hours um, out of London. But it was worth going there because it was a perfect replica of a French chateau built in the 18th century by an Englishman who fell in, who had been stationed as a diplomat in France and fell in love with the French style and recreated this house. And it was um, in perfect original condition. It hadn't been restored like so many stately homes had been. And um, we made that the Chateau Bonaparte. And that was uh, his residence uh, after his marriage to Josephine and when he became a general, when he was promoted. So it was a, an upgrade for him. And beautiful grounds and beautiful um, mature oak trees everywhere and a stream uh, and a huge, lovely approach driveway, uh, beautifully set in the, like a painting, which is um, what we were after as a design approach, which was to bring to life historical paintings of the period, which um, was the form of documentation at the time uh, uh, of major events. Didn't have CNN then. You didn't? No. <laughs> you, you, but you've got so much to work with, all that from this period, and oh, palaces and hovels and burning villages and it's just got to be, got to be, it, yes, like a kid in a candy store working on this. Yes, I was, and and you know that's typical of a Ridley epic. I mean, this this is the epic of all epics, I think, uh, because of the scale of not only uh, you know the the basically uh, what we did was uh, chronicle the rise of Napoleon from a relative obscure. Uh, artillery officer uh, in his um, victory at the Battle of Toulon, which brought him to the attention of the um, Revolutionary uh, Committee in Paris. And from there he rose um, eventually and became uh, first consul of France, and then eventually crowned himself emperor. Most of that story is recorded in, in monumental historical paintings, principally, but not exclusively, by uh, Jean-Jacques David. And one of the really interesting uh, aspects of this film was uh, we included the character David, the painter, and um, in several scenes, you see him actually working, recording the event. And then we find him in other scenes, um, working on the painting, continuing the work. And that was really interesting, recreating an 18th century artist studio, recreating the paintings, and including uh, uh, you know, the ultimate um, enormous um, 30 foot across and I think 16 foot high monumental painting of the coronation of Napoleon, which we we didn't recreate completely, but sections of it, quite large sections of, um, had technical and artistic elements that were very challenging. I mean, the whole film was a challenge. Going back to your question, I can I can't even imagine working on, from, uh, just just to, with such a huge palette to draw from, but still, I'm sure a huge challenge. Yes, it was, but it had its, you know, more intimate scenes and, and, and uh, interiors, which were quite enjoyable to do bedrooms, drawing rooms. And in the context of the character's uh, condition within the, uh, the arc of the story, where they rise and fall all the time, it makes it very dynamic and the changes to their lifestyle due to the revolutionary uh, sort of tide of change going through France. And the scale, okay. the scale was just, you know, um, it's hard to find a word, monumental. Um, uh, the battle scenes 
there we didn't do all of them i'm happy to say we did some selected ones um the battle of borodino uh which was uh napoleon's march on moscow and the russian campaign the battle of austerlitz which was his victory over the russian austrian army and then finally the battle of waterloo we had some others planned and um we we ultimately felt there were we didn't want to make a documentary about you know the history of Napoleon's military campaigns of which there were dozens so we chose you know the major ones um and tried to focus more on his his arc his rise his journey through from obscurity to um you know basically the most famous person in the world and his um rather um sort of uh tempestuous relationship with his um his wife and, and soon to be queen and empress uh josephine yeah and that made it much more rich a storytelling than just a lot of battle scenes and military spectacle no, there's plenty no, of no question but uh, we're going to wrap things there um arthur max good luck to you this coming awards season napoleon starring joaquin phoenix is being released in theaters on november 22 thanks for joining us today at gold derby my pleasure see you some other time thank you